Well, hello, hello, and welcome everybody. So I, last week, I took this session of the Proxmox VE advanced training. I took it from Wihui, not from Proxmox themselves. And I was kind of debating about that. The Proxmox, uh, the, the training that's done by Proxmox themselves was not available, I think until June. And I wanted to get it done sooner than that. So I went with Wihui and I'm actually really, really glad that I did. And I will, I will get into that. But let me first, I'm going to bring up my notes here, some notes here, and some notes. Oh, where did the last set of notes go? I had some some other notes, right? Okay, right here. Okay. I'm going to bring up some things I'm going to go through. So first of all, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I wanted to know about the Proxmox training, and there were no videos available describing it. There were no videos that were really advertising it. As in, here's a little snippet of what you learn in the training. Come join the course to learn more. There was there was none of that available as video material, and really not much or any in terms of written material. So let me talk about that for a second first. And for that, I'm going to bring over the official Proxmox website. And this is the training website. So these are their training courses. And there's basically three possibilities. You're going to take the installation training, the advanced training, or the bundle of the two. And the module details are very sparse. It doesn't tell you a whole bunch about what you're going to be learning. Now, granted that I've been using Proxmox for a few years, and this one's called install, and this one's called advanced, I opted for the advanced. And I'm glad that I did. However, if we could rename these, which hopefully they will get renamed. What we should call them instead is Proxmox Virtualization and Proxmox Clustering because they're both advanced courses. You can't go in with a beginner understanding or without having used Proxmox at all. They are, they do require more background. So with that, let me just go over what the training outline was for this. So cluster setup, hardware requirements, features, config, management, uptime management, high availability, authentication, realms, user management, the API, security concepts, hyper-converged infrastructure, storage replication, troubleshooting, baseline performance, exercises, and hands-on labs. That is not the way at all that my course was structured. Now, I like the way that mine was structured a lot better, but that's a general outline. If we take a look here, we'll see what Wihui, how they outline it. It covers the same material, but I think that the way that they stack things, especially the way that I experienced it, was much more logical. For example, there was no security section that we went over. Things that were relevant to security were just sprinkled throughout as they were relevant. And there were some other topics like that hardware sizing, performance, that just came along naturally with the sections that they've outlined. So, considerations for deploying clusters, Proxmox backup server. This one ended up being a lot more interesting than I thought, because it sounds boring, but I'll go into that later. Deployment of Ceph, hyperconverged infrastructure, guest management, high availability, ZFS replication, cluster networking, including SDN, which <coughs> I'm really glad that they included that because that was one of the things that really made this training worth my while. And then automation in Proxmox using the API and techniques. And this one was very, very small, but also very poignant in terms of the way that it was taught. And then troubleshooting. Troubleshooting was, I would say, sprinkled throughout as well. So this is recommended for professionals. Uh, it says interested in learning the fundamental concepts. I, I think you gotta have some knowledge of the fundamental concepts before you go in, but that's, that's what they say. And then I'm gonna go off of my notes here. So let me go ahead and bring over my own notes. All right, so first thing that I would say, I, this was mentioned, I think both of these were mentioned on the last day. This one's direct quote, I typed it as the man was speaking as it fell from the lips of Bill. I wrote it down and then this is kind of paraphrased from something else. But 
People who don't take the training don't know what they don't know. 100% agree. This is with everything. You can use something for years. I've seen this so many times in industry and in my the various things I've worked in, especially going, which I'm very passionate about. People who lack a formal education and formal not meaning college, formal meaning, for example, a training, people who lack formal education don't know what they don't know. They can they can be working at something for five or 10 years and missing key concepts and little golden nuggets. And that was, aside from wanting to get certified, which was my primary reason for taking the course, but also hoping that I'd get plenty of golden nuggets. And I did, I got more than I thought I would. And I was very pleasantly and uh, surprised and pleased with that. But yeah, you need to have some amount of formal training in anything that you're going to pursue professionally, I believe, in order to be the best that you can be. Actually, I don't think that's an I believe. I think that's pretty objective. If you want to be the best that you can be, formal training is key. You there's no matter how much experience you have, you just can't learn everything from experience and you'll you'll skip over things that uh, people who have been involved at a more official capacity have uh, glean the wisdom of, or it's surfaced up from other use cases, whatnot. Uh, second quote here, if you're thinking about purchasing support, think first about taking the training before you buy the hardware, if you can, it'll save you money and make the time you spend on support much more valuable. Now that was paraphrased, but that was basically one of the things that Bill who led the training said. And I think that that's really valuable to anybody who's going to be using Proxmox, as you think about the cost of your hardware, the cost of the development that your uh, people that are going to be using these VMs and potentially developing on them or the services that you're going to be running on them, it just makes so much sense to have formal training so that you can get more things right and have fewer problems. Now, obviously, when you're starting small, you know, the training could be more than your first cluster. Uh, but anyway. I just want to point that out. So as I said already, the name install versus advanced is misleading. It's more virtualization versus clustering. All of the content is advanced. In fact, I have been talking with Ryan. He and I are the ones that are going into this Proxmox work together. And we've been doing it for the past few years with, I won't go into the, the projects we've been doing, but Anyway, we've been doing the past few years and we're talking about both signing up again for Wihui. I originally we were talking about, I'd go to Wihui, he would go to Proxmox proper, but now we're both thinking about going back to Wihui to get the in installation and administration training, because there are plenty of golden nuggets that I know are waiting for us there. And I'd be excited to have those too. So we, approach was very decision oriented and experience oriented, which is exactly what I want. I don't want to just know information. I want to know information contextually as how I apply it to meet my needs, customer needs, etc. And we, with their background, if you look at their website now, it looks like they're just Proxmox trainers. That's, that's what I thought. They actually do a lot of support and they've been doing support for many years. And the Proxmox training has become more of a central focus for them, but they are speaking with the voice of experience and can answer complex questions about various types of setup and strategy. So I really appreciated that. One of the other things that was really awesome about Wihui was that the labs did not have a single hitch. The only problems with the labs were the problems that were basically expected to happen because there are certain things that if you don't follow a step, you're going to fall into this pitfall and pretty much, you know, in a, in a class of eight people or so, you're always going to have one or two people that are going to fall into that pitfalls that serve as an excellent demonstration for that talking point to come up. So this is one of the areas where the troubleshooting was just integrated into the labs. And it wasn't that the, la the labs didn't have gotchas in them. The labs just had standard best practice ways of setting things up. But if you didn't hear the instructions or misunderstood them or click, you know, you weren't uh, paying, didn't realize that you needed to pay particular attention to detail in a, in a drop down menu or something. And, you know, there's some talking, there's some going, and that is a 16 hour class that covers a lot of material. So there is a pace to be kept. It wasn't rushed, but there is a pace to it. <coughs> and 
So there, there were those things that came up, but the labs themselves, everything was provisioned perfectly. They did an infrastructure as code type of setup and it just worked wonderfully. It was great. I have never been to any sort of professional training or workshop at a conference or anything like that where things went so smoothly and were so well done. And that speaks to them having in many ways perfected this course. They say it's a different course every time they teach it because there's always a little bit of feedback, a little bit of something that gets integrated, that gets moved around here or there. And anyway, I just, I, I will sing their praises for that because I just thought they did such an excellent job. 